Hey Tricksters, Patrick here, and I am thrilled to be adding a new installment to my sauna review videos. This time we travel to London, England, where I spent a night at Sweatbox. In this video, I'll break down my experience, look at the location, the staff, the facilities, the men, some pros and cons, and finally, I'll give my official rating out of five eggplants. And to hear all the sexy stories from my night at Sweatbox, head on over to my OnlyFans page. The link is in the description below. Okay, first off, let me know in the comments, have you been to Sweatbox and what was it like for you? So let's talk about the location of Sweatbox. Sweatbox is super easy to get to from anywhere in London because it's just off the tube station, it's just off of Oxford Street, which is a giant street there, and it's in the north end of Soho. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the nitty gritty of Sweatbox. Now, all this information you can find on their website, sweatboxsoho.com. Sweatbox is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So basically how it works at Sweatbox and how it works in most of these European saunas I'm discovering is very different from the North American style. Here, you're paying an entrance fee and you're getting the use of the facilities. So it says that for a 24 hour pass, it's 20 pounds, but then it says the maximum stay at any time is eight hours. Can somebody explain to me what that means? There's membership prices, like 75 pounds for a month. You can pay for 12 months. Usually at places like this, all of the cabins are a free for all. So if there's one empty, you go in it, you shut the door, you can play around. If it's occupied, it's occupied and you're SOL. But in this case, they are giving you the option where you can rent these uh, posh cabin prices and they're gonna throw in a fleece blanket and a pillow. <laughs> what they do have here and what they don't have in other places that I've seen are massages available. So they have massage therapists on hand to help relieve your tension. So as you can see on staff right here, they have a lovely lad named George, but let's talk about the check-in experience. So as you're approaching the front, it's clearly Mart Sweatbox, so you absolutely know where you are. It felt very futuristic when I when you first walk in, um, because you've got this voice talking and hello, welcome to Sweatbox. And then the lighting was really cool, the front desk looked really cool. It was a very small entrance with a couple of staircases going up either side into we don't know where yet, right? So I was really impressed as soon as I walked in. They've had issues with drugs in the past. Sweatbox, the way that they've thought to deal with this issue is to have lock boxes. So you take all of your shit, you put it in this lock box and it's kept behind in the cashier area with them safe and sound. All you're allowed to bring with you to your locker is your clothing. Oh, let's talk about the key though. The key was super cool. It goes around your wrist. It's like a bracelet and that clicks around. The entire time I was there, I didn't even remember it was on me. It's out of the way, you don't think about it, and it's 100% safe. Okay, before I go on, if you've been watching my videos and you enjoy my content, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so that you're notified every time a new video comes out, and give her a like. Before we get into the main facilities of Sweatbox, let's talk about the staff at Sweatbox. The staff were hands down the most unhelpful, <laughs> uninterested staff I've ever encountered. I, I couldn't believe. Now, this review is being done on one night that I went on a Sunday night. It's one night. From the check-in, the guy that was helping <laughs> was very unhelpful. We were clearly tourists. We clearly had never been there before. So really got off on the wrong foot with the staff. Can you, can I get a smile? <laughs> Is that too much? We, we don't gotta be best friends, but I mean, and then it just went downhill from there. For example, later on in the evening, we needed to get stuff from our lockbox. So we went up to the front desk and we were like, hey, this is, this is my locker number. Can I get something from my lockbox? and a lockbox was presented to me and opened up uh, and just pushed towards me like this and I was left with this lockbox that was open and it wasn't my stuff. I was staring at a cell phone and a wallet that weren't mine, which means I could have easily have just grabbed that stuff and taken out whatever I wanted 
from somebody else's lockbox. Of course I didn't. <laughs> but imagine that was so unorganized. It just felt really sloppy, unorganized, and dangerous, frankly. Staff were hands down the worst part about Sweatbox. So now that we have the staff out of the way, let's look at the lay of the land. So the locker area, basically you, from the reception, you go up some stairs and you're in this sort of elevated locker room area. You put your stuff in your locker, you lock the thing, you put the little chamois towel around your waist. They offer these little chamois towels instead of an actual towel. At first I thought, this is a negative. This is not cool. But as the night progressed, I realized this chamois towel was brilliant. <laughs> it can get wet and then you wring it out and it's dry. The main floor room is interesting. There's a TV and there's some couches. There's also a big jacuzzi. The jacuzzi was a nice size and it looked really inviting but I didn't like that it was in the main sort of sitting area. So it was very it, not sexy. Like I guess it was more social. It, it would have been nicer if the jacuzzi was downstairs where all the sex stuff was happening. So then from there, there's not much there except sitting watching TV, being in the jacuzzi or chatting with the front desk people and being offered not your wallet. There's a turnstile thing, really hardcore security turnstile thing where you beep your little beeper to get through the turnstile. Okay, from there, there's like two sets of stairs. Like one goes down to the gym. And now the gym is a full on gym. Like there's nothing wanting from this gym. If you want to go work out, you can have a full on workout at this gym. If you use the other staircase, you go down on the first kind of landing, there's a bathroom and then you go down some more and then it opens up into this like big shower area on the opposite wall of that there's a door you go in there's like three steam rooms and they're all sort of connected with this kind of like maze like feeling uh there's a lot of nooks and crannies then you go down another flight of stairs so down there you have showers there's like a shower room with little peekaboo windows so if you're walking through the corridor you can look in and see who's showering in there off of the showers there's two douching stations. Now these douching stations were really unique. It's like this standing toilet where, I mean, clearly it's for douching because there's like the hose and you have like the taps and it's the hose is spraying. And then on the floor, you have this really like a grate, like a aluminum sort of opening grate where you're, obviously you stand. Okay, so down in the cellar is like all the sex rooms. So this is where you find like three or four aisles. Some of them are just standing with like foam floors. Some of them are elevated and they have like a little mattress. In the back, there's kind of a cage and there's a sling hanging there. There's more rooms in the back with glory holes between the rooms. Then there's a dark room in the back and I didn't actually go into the dark room because I didn't feel like it, <laughs> I wasn't into it, but there's a dark room in the back and it's pitch black. There is a big room off to the side with like little rooms off of it with curtains that are dividing the rooms. So basically you close your little curtain and then you can play in your little sort of section. There's another sling in there as well. Let's talk about the guys. It wasn't that busy on the night that I went. I don't know if it's because it was a Sunday and everybody works the next day, but I was kind of surprised that it was so quiet. The cross section of guys that I got were uh, good for who was there. The average age, maybe like 35. Most of them were there alone. A couple of them, I saw boyfriends actually together. Their attitudes, it was hard to make connections. Um, they were a little standoffish, a little bit, what I would call Canadian. Luckily on this night, I did meet one super hot South African guy and we had a great time. So if you want to hear that story, that's on my OnlyFans linked below. So the place really emptied out, I mean, around midnight, I would say it really died down. Let's look at the pros and cons of Sweatbox. One of the pros for me was the douching stations. Whenever there's a place that has a douching station installed, I really appreciate that. As somebody who bottoms a lot, um, you prepare, you get ready and everything, but you're human, you never know when you need to top it up. It's always nice to have a douching station available. Another one of the pros to Sweatbox, it was the thoughtful lighting and like decor. 
in the sense that like the lighting, they had like red lights, they had, which I really like because that always makes everybody look better than they do. <laughs> uh, like strip lighting and it was like recessed lighting and sort of mood lighting. The walls had this cool like black tile kind of 3D effect on the, like it, little details that I notice and make a big difference for me um, in the atmosphere and the ambiance of the place. One of the cons is also one of the pros, which was the douching stations. There was just, I don't know if there was a better way to do them or to place them somewhere else. They were just in a really high traffic area. So every time you walk by, there's like this poo smell if somebody had just been in there. And so as much as it, it's a, a pro, it was also a bit of a con. Of course, the number one con <laughs> of Sweatbox on the night that I was there was the staff. They were unhelpful, unfriendly, uncaring, <laughs> just, it was awful. Listen, when I left Sweatbox, it was just after midnight, and I said, I asked the front desk guy, as I was leaving, I was like, do you know where I can get some beer? Because I just wanted to get like a six pack and bring it back to like my hotel. He turns to me, like cold, stone cold face, and goes like this, he goes, I don't drink. I was like, wow, like, what? Sorry? <laughs> what? I'm sorry. Like, what? What? Z -z 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 you don't have to drink to know where you can pick up some fucking alcohol. <laughs> I don't drink. Oh, so you don't know where I can buy some beer? Like, what? I don't, I'm clearly from out of town. I just spent money at your establishment and you can't even point me in the right direction or tell me, Sorry, uh, you know what? Everything is actually closed. You can't get alcohol until tomorrow. Give me some information. Like, do you live in the city or not? So my rating for Sweatbox, and keep in mind, this is a rating that's based on the night that I was there in particular. Maybe on another night, it's way different. I don't know. For them, I hope it is. And maybe the rest of the staff are super amazing, but based on my experience on that night, it's gonna be a soft three out of five eggplants for me. And I feel like I'm being kind of generous. Now, if you want to stay in touch with me, the best way to do that is by signing up for my newsletter. You'll get stories and special offers that I do not post anywhere else. And for more sauna reviews, check out this playlist right here. And I'll see you in the next video. Mwah!